Hi, I'm Stephen Copernitz, Managing Partner of Copernitz Law, LLC. I'm here today to talk about some very exciting news, a uh, victory for SDVOSBs and VOSBs in this big Kingdom Rear Supreme Court decision. In June 2016, service-disabled veteran-owned small businesses and veteran-owned small businesses were big winners. Supreme Court unanimously ruled that the VA's Rule of Two is mandatory and applies to all VA procurements, including GSA schedule orders. Supreme Court's decision in Kingdomware Technologies, Inc. versus United States means that the VA will truly be required to put veterans first in all of its procurement actions, which is exactly what Kingdomware and many veterans advocates have fought for all along. Well, let's delve a little bit into the history of this important case. As followers of the Kingdomware case know, the battle over the VA's Rule of Two began way back in 2006, when Congress passed a statute known as the Veterans Benefits, Healthcare, and Information Technology Act of 2006, which I'll call the VA Act. The VA Act included a provision requiring the VA to restrict competitions to veteran-owned firms so long as this Rule of Two is satisfied. The Rule of Two, in turn, calls for SDVOSB or VOSB set-asides, so long as the contract officer has a reasonable expectation of receiving offers for two or more SDVOSBs or VOSBs. The only exceptions referenced in the statute allow the VA to make sole source awards to veteran-owned companies under certain circumstances. Nothing in the statute provides an exception for orders off the GSA schedule or under any other government-wide acquisition contract. But, despite the absence of a statutory exception for GSA schedule orders, the VA long took the position that it could order off the GSA schedule without first applying the VA Act's Rule of Two. In 2011, the issue first came to a head at the GAO. In a bid protest called Aldevra, uh, the GAO sustained an SDVSB's protest and held that the VA had violated the law by ordering certain supplies off the GSA schedule without first applying the Rule of Two. The GAO then sustained a number of other protests filed by Aldevra and other companies, including Kingdom Rare Technologies, Inc. But there was one major problem. The VA refused to follow the GAO's decisions. Now, GAO decisions are technically recommendations. Agencies almost always follow those recommendations, but they're not legally required to do so. In this case, the VA kept circumventing the Rule of Two, notwithstanding the fact that the GAO uh, had decided that that was violating the law. So finally, Kingdomware Technologies took the VA to federal court. But, unfortunately, in November 2012, the U.S. Court of Federal Claims reached a different conclusion than the GAO. In a case called T Kingdomware Technologies Inc. versus the United States, the court ruled in favor of the VA. The court determined that the VA Act was goal-setting in nature, not mandatory. And the court held that the VA need not follow the Rule of Two so long as the VA had met its agency-wide goals for STVOSB and VOSB contracting, which, to the VA's credit, it had. Kingdomware appealed to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit. And in June 2014, a three-member panel of judges upheld the Court of Federal Claims' decision two-to-one vote. Like the Court of Federal Claims, the Federal Circuit Majority held that the VA Act's Rule of Two was a goal-setting requirement, and that the VA need not apply the Rule of Two so long as it's meeting its STVSB and VOSB goals. But in a sharp dissent, Judge Jim Reyna noted the statute uses the mandatory word shall, and argued that the phrase, for purposes of meeting the goals under subsection A, which is what the majority said made this a goal-setting statute, was merely what Jim Reyna called prefatory language that explained the general purpose of the statute, but did not vary the statute's mandatory requirement. In June 2015, the Supreme Court agreed to hear Kingdomware's appeal of the Federal Circuit ruling. Kingdomware and the government began filing briefs with the Supreme Court, as did a number of Kingdomware supporters, including myself. But in a surprising twist, in September 2015, the government abandoned the goal-setting argument and prevailed it twice in the lower courts. In September's filing, the government conceded that the Rule of Two applies regardless of whether the VA has met its goals, but argued that statute's use of the word contract excludes GSA schedule orders, as well as orders under other multiple war vehicles, so the government hanging its hat on the idea that an order is not a contract. The Supreme Court heard oral arguments on the morning of February 22, 2016. I was uh, in the court for those arguments. At the court, Kingdomware's counsel uh, focused primarily on the mandatory nature of the statutory language. 
The VA's counsel, in turn, made primarily policy arguments, uh, namely <coughs> contending it would be difficult and cumbersome uh, for the VA to have to apply the Rule of Two in every setting. And after February 22nd, SDVOSBs, VOSBs, and all those who have been following this matter closely waited for the court's decision. And in June 2016, it came, and it's a big, big win. So the Supreme Court's opinion was written uh, for an eight to nothing, keep in mind that uh, Justice uh, Scalia had passed as an eight, eight member court, written for an eight to nothing unanimous court by Justice Clarence Thomas. And Justice Thomas begins by recounting the history of the VA Act, which I just went through, the Rule of Two, and of course the history of the Kingdom Order itself. The court then examines whether it has jurisdiction to consider the case. This is a technical issue that had been raised earlier in the process, uh, and the court concludes that it does have jurisdiction. Turning to the merits, the court gets right to business, and I'll quote from the decision. Uh, the court ri writes, on the merits, we hold that Section 8127, that's the VA Act section in question, is mandatory, not discretionary. Its text requires the department to apply the Rule of Two to all contracting determinations and to award contracts to veteran-owned small businesses. The Act does not allow the department to evade the Rule of Two on the ground that it's already met its contracting goals or on the ground that the department has placed an order through the GSA schedule. And so the court explains that the use of statutory construction is what's doing. Statutory construction is interpreting the statute. And the court explains that any issue of statutory construction begins with the language of the statute. And if the language is unambiguous and the statutory scheme is coherent and consistent, the court's review ends there. In this case, the court writes that Section 8127 unambiguously requires the department to use the Rule of Two before applying other procedures. The court points out uh, that the statute includes the word shall and writes, unlike the word may, which implies discretion, the word shall usually connotes a, recall, a requirement. Accordingly, the department shall or must prefer veteran-owned small businesses when the Rule of Two is satisfied. The court then writes that other portions of the statute confirm that Congress used the word shall as a command. Therefore, before contracting with a non-veteran-owned business, the department must first apply the Rule of Two. Next, the court turns to the government's shifting rationales for evading the Rule of Two. The court takes note of the fact that the government changed its theory of the case late in the process. Uh, but nonetheless, it addresses the government's original argument regarding the goal-setting nature of the statute, even though the government had officially abandoned that argument. The court writes, to get on a quote here, the prefatory clause, and again, you see the court agreed with uh, Justice uh, or Judge Jim Reyna uh, from the, the previous case, the prefatory clause has no bearing on whether Section 8127's requirement is mandatory or discretionary. The clause announces an objective that Congress hoped the Department would achieve and charges the Secretary with setting annual benchmarks, but it does not change the plain meaning of the operative clause, the operative clause being the part that says they shall apply the rule to. The court next rejects the VA's argument that the word contracts means that the VA Act doesn't apply to federal supply schedule or GSA schedule orders. Keep in mind, that's the argument that the VA had pushed at the Supreme Court that an order was not a contract. The court writes that it would ordinarily not entertain an argument that the government failed to raise at the lower courts. But, it, the court says, the department's forfeited argument fails in any event. The court explains that when the department places an FSS, GSA Schedule Order, that order creates contractual obligations for each party and is a contract within the ordinary meaning of that term. The court also explains that an order is a contract as defined by federal regulations, particular, particularly FAR 2.101. The court then goes into some additional explanation about why these orders are just types of contracts. Finally, the court rejects the government's argument that the court should defer to the VA's interpretation of the VA Act. The court simply writes that we do not defer to the agency when the statute is unambiguous. Thus, we decline the department's invitation to defer to its interpretation. So the Supreme Court decision concludes, we hold that the Rule of Two contracting procedures in Section 8127D are not limited to those contracts necessary to fulfill the Secretary's goals under that section. We also hold that Section 8127D applies to orders placed under the FSS, the GSA schedule. The judgment of the Court for the, of, the, of Appeals for the Federal Circuit is reversed, and the case is remanded for further proceedings consistent with this opinion. So, for SDVOSBs and VOSBs, the Supreme Court's Kingdom War decision is a huge win. Ever since the VA Act was adopted, the VA has taken the position that it may order off the GSA schedule without prioritizing better known businesses, but that's about to change. I expect the Kingdom Board decision will prove a major boon to SDVOSBs and VOSBs. 
ultimately resulting in billions of extra dollars flowing to veteran-owned companies. The long battle is over, and SDVSBs and VOSBs have won.